right, so the Course says that we are s saviors of the world, and that's our only function. Mm -hmm. And so in order to be saviors of the world, we have to have peace. And once we have that peace, we, by example, the world will be saved. Is that how that works, or is there things that we need to do in form that we need to consider? Or is it just, is that the ultimate goal is just peace, or is there something beyond peace? Yep, that's, that is the ultimate goal, peace of mind. And, and the, the world is, is saved by peace and peace of mind. It's not saved by world peace, thinking that the bodies will look a certain way, the guns will all drop, and, and the bombs will all stop, and, you know, having some kind of form in mind. But it is, peace of mind is the, is the goal. And you could say that that is salvation. So when we say that, that our function is to be the saviors of the world, it's not talking about that there's a personal savior, just like sometimes Christians will like to talk about Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ your Lord and personal savior? Somehow that if you profess you know, in words, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and everything, then you're saved. Unlike the rest of the other ones who don't profess that and they're damned. You're saved because you said the words. They're damned because they didn't say the words. Now it goes a lot deeper than that. It's, it's how, it's being in, in accord with, with the Holy Spirit. You know, really having your mind completely lined up. Are there any things to do? Well, Jesus says, what you do comes from what you think. So as long as you have two, a split mind, we'll say, where you're listening to two voices and, you, and you're listening to two thought systems, you know, you're going to have conflicted, a conflicted mind and it will seem that you will have erratic behavior uh, by most accounts as well because what you do comes from what you think. And if you're not sure, if you're trying to follow two masters in mind, right mind and wrong mind, you know, it's Holy Spirit and ego, until you resolve the conflict in the mind, um, what shall I do is really, uh, it's really a very much of a form question. And as long as you believe you're a body, the Holy Spirit will reach your mind where you believe you are. You can get some very specific instructions as far as like that thing in the workbook, um, what would you have me do, what would you have me say, where would you have me go, you know, th it's very, very specific. The prayer is really, you know, instruct me. You know, I, I believe I'm a body, so instruct me. The deeper you go with the mind training, you start to realize that the Course is really getting cl you clear about your motivation, it's getting you clear about your intentions, and most of all, it's, it's showing you that you have to be super clear in your mind on your purpose. Because the ego has one purpose for the world, and the Holy Spirit has another purpose for the world. And never the twain shall meet. You know, perfect love cast out fear. But it doesn't say you'll, you'll put fear and love in a blender, and you're going to make a fear-love milkshake, and, you know, just take a drink and mix them together. It, it's, it's like oil and water. You can put oil and water in a blender, you can rev that thing as much as you want, but the oil and the water are going to separate. They, they just don't have any meeting point. And love and fear are the same way. So practically speaking, as you go through the mind training, you, you're really asking, what is this for? What is this for? And you start to get glimmers that it's not so important what the body is doing. But it's, it is super important what the motive is, what the intention, what the purpose is. All right, well, I, got the, I have the impression that until the whole world is saved, we will always uh, see ourselves as bodies and we'll, be, we'll get sick and we'll age and we'll die. And that is, function, uh, that is our function to awaken the whole world. Yeah so that eventually everyone awakens and then, then we can all become spirit. So is that how it's going to, is that how it, it works? Yeah, as, as long as you serve two masters, as long as the mind is split, 
then it perceives a distorted world, it perceives a fragmented world. It will perceive birth and death, it will perceive sickness and health, it will perceive all the dualities of the world because the split in the mind is pushed out of awareness, it's, it's dissociated from awareness. But that split in the mind will always exist until the whole world is saved. So like, for example, in your case, like even at your advanced stage, that split in the mind will always be there. So you can never get rid, you can never, it'll never go away. Well, no, it's inevitable that the split will go away because, because the miracle is the correction. And you might say the, the atonement, which is the, the really the goal of the teacher of God, the sole, per, sole responsibility of the teacher of God, the sole responsibility of of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. So in accepting this correction in the mind, you see the world differently. And so this inevitability of, of a split world is not an inevitability at all. It's, it's actually, it has to go away. It, it just seems to be a matter of time, how, how long it takes to accept that correction. But, but oh, it's, the ego's days are numbered. Uh, because the correction's already occurred. The Holy Spirit already offered that correction and all it's really a matter of now is accepting that correction. And when the mind has accepted that correction, it doesn't, it doesn't see the same world. It doesn't see the same world that it seemed to see before. It's the perception has been corrected. Now that that's, takes a lot of mind training, but it doesn't have anything to do with the age of the body, it doesn't matter whether the body seems to be still here or not. Um, you might say that, that the mind training is coming about so that you can perceive the world as whole, see the world as completely unified, and then the world will disappear. There is one part in the Manual for Teachers where Jesus says there are those that have laid the body aside in order to increase their helpfulness. And to the ego, that's like, what? Why would you lay the body aside to increase the helpfulness? How can that even be? How could that be more helpful to lay it aside? Don't you think it could, ego thinks it could be, think of a lot of ways a body could be more helpful uh, while it's still animated and active. But that's just pointing that this whole world is backwards and upside down. And then your, your task is really to sink into a deep stillness, join with the Holy Spirit, and just watch the world and see the world with the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the whole value of everything that you do. In fact, the Course is actually saying that's the only thing you need to put effort into. But how is that saving the world? How, is that, how does that make you a savior of the world? Well, you're just focused on yourself. This, the mind that's asleep and dreaming and is perceiving a split world, a world of duality, is sick. It, it, it needs saving or healing. And so it's not, when we say that your function is to be the savior of the world, it's not to mean that, that personally that you'll ever be the savior of the world, because personally is the problem. You know, seeing the world in terms of personalities is, is the problem. The ego peopled the world. It, it made up its whole world. So, so actually, how is it saved? It's like it's saved through a saved perception of the world, a, a healed perception of the world, a corrected perception. And uh, like I was saying, every bit of seeming effort, every bit of attention, as soon as you can re have the slightest inkling that the only problem there is is a perceptual problem, seeing a fragmented world, then you will suddenly, if you really see that, you will put all your effort into healing the mind and having a healed perception of the world. You wouldn't put any effort into trying to solve the problems of the world. You know, hunger, uh, nuclear proliferation, uh, the ozone layer, all the, you know, abortion, or just whatever you want, you know, you could pick all those things. You start to see that those aren't really the problem, so you're not going to invest any time in trying to Well, I was thinking it. about Savior of the World as being like letting other people see that they need to be healed, their mind, that they need to come to peace. 
like so you're like a vehicle for sharing that that yeah, light with yeah, everybody but then else if you get deep enough you start to realize that the problem was seeing that there was people this people that people other people that's the problem so then why do you go to different places to you know speak to people it's only what's what's given okay. uh, it's only what's given like I have no control over that okay. I mean it's so like no it's like a, it's right. called a special function but it's totally given so you know it I mean it can be inferred like well why would you even why would you even travel to different countries if if there's no people <laughs> what's the point uh, of traveling well, that's kind of a waste of time uh, if there's not people why would you even travel well it's it's the way miracles work it's it's like when you give your mind over to the spirit you you give it all over you don't have a life anymore you don't have a say you don't have a choice you can't say you can't sit down and have a dialogue with Jesus and the Holy Spirit it's like you're going to Argentina I don't want to go to Argentina but you're going to Argentina you know there's not you know there's not that kind of interplay of like a, a you that's saying I don't want to you know like typically children do with parents I don't want to eat those lima beans <laughs> you know, eat the lima beans it's, it's more just it's it's totally given but it's not for helping people it's all for purification of the mind it's all for teaching extending teaching what you would learn it's a it's a conversion of the mind but it has nothing to do with time and space there's, there's not a, a reason for it actually if if you would have locked if you would have interviewed David back in those days and you would have said um, you know would you like to travel the world and and go to all these countries and go through all these body searches and hundreds of luggage racks and all the different things that David would had no interest in that but the spirit has a purpose of you, of guiding you in that way yeah just just to heal the mind that's all it's about it's not really trying to reach people reach reach the lost souls or convert the ones that are misled or you know save the lost or whatever if you believe there's anyone who's lost that's you you have to bring it back and start to realize that the mind that thinks it's it's here in this world the, the mind that's identified with personality and individuality that mind is lost and that mind needs a conversion to be so to when you say the up. mind that's your mind or is that the just whole world mind the whole or, the, the or mind the, yeah. mind. <laughs> the mind not is your mind or my mind the, okay the, the universal mind, mind. Just the mind. Yeah. healing the universal mind yeah okay so it's a, it's a great I, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to give your life over to accepting the the correction or to letting yourself be the savior of the world not in a personal sense not that you know I do have friends who I have a friend in in St. Louis who who prayed worked with the course for years prayed okay I'm gonna give everything I'm over I'm gonna give my house my life and everything over and he was terrified that he would have to put on a robe and go stand out on the street corner uh, preaching uh, but but he never he never was called to, <laughs> to go stand on the street corner and preach but he was terrified that if I give it all over oh my god what's what's gonna happen uh, but I just see that it's all about following the the guidance the prompts and and you experience the peace you experience the happiness and joy that's that's the reward you you know that it actually is working by how you feel and that's your that's like your barometer that's your your gauge it's pretty radical when you think to, to just let yourself be used for the healing of all perception and that you shall know that you are experiencing it by how you feel it's pretty radical <laughs>